Hello and welcome to the COVID-19 update for the town of Pembroke. I am Donna Rodriguez. I'm going to be your moderator today and I am very thankful to be joined by Sabrina Chilcott, the assistant town manager for the town of Pembroke, um, as well as Lisa Cullody, the health agent, <coughs> excuse me, Ken McCormick, the deputy chief of the Pembroke Fire Department, and Wendy LaPierre, the lieutenant for the uh, Pembroke Police Department. So there's so much to talk about. We're very thankful to be here um, to give you information. If any of you are watching us live on January 27th, we would ask if you have questions, please email us directly at pembrokeinfo at pactv.org so we can answer the questions live uh, during this program. If you would like to view this in the future, um, and you can also get more information about what is happening for programming for the town of Pembroke if you just visit pactv.org slash Pembroke. So I'm going to start off by asking Sabrina. Welcome, Sabrina. We're happy you're here with us today. Can you just give us a little bit of an overview of how things are going in Pembroke right now and information that you want to share with the residents? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Donna, and thank you to all the staff at PAC TV for always being available, professional, and able to carry the message of this incredible team of thank emergency you. management personnel um, and on behalf of the town manager. Our town manager, Bill Chenard, has been working very closely with the folks you're about to speak with today um, to discuss and address some of the concerns that we've been hearing from residents and from other departments concerning some of the updates. This is a very quickly moving situation. So as far as <coughs> your question, thank you for it. Um, you're gonna hear today from all of these folks about different concerns that have been brought to them from residents. I know that uh, Lieutenant LaPierre has a few things to say about that. And uh, some of the folks who are calling and trying to interpret what they hear from the governor by calling their local town uh, the offices that they know and trust, the people that they come in and meet with. And um, this uh, staff is just doing such a good job trying to interpret some of this information, make it very simple, and um, and give that people that sense of security and confidence. Yeah, I think you make a great point that information is changing so rapidly, uh, daily and you know by the hour. Um, Pembroke has done a great job with sharing that with residents. What do you recommend? Uh, where should people go to be getting information directly from the town? Well, the nice thing about uh, the new format, uh, we converted the website to a more uh, user-friendly governmental platform. It's uh, coded in Drupal and it's hosted by Civic Plus. But what it does for the town is it puts an amazing amount of information cataloged easily because people don't want to search. They don't want to mm -hmm. struggle. They just want the information given to them. They want to know what they need to know when they need to know it. So our website at least has that urgent alert page that you can subscribe to. You don't have to go look at it. You can click a button and have it emailed to you. So every day when that page is updated, you, it's emailed to you. The content is sent. Did the map change for vaccines, locations, eligibility? Did the governor say something that people need to know about? If they've registered for these alerts, those alerts are sent to their email. Additionally, daily case data that I'm sure Health Agent Lisa Cullity will talk about um, is also put into that platform and then dispersed out to people who are interested in receiving it. So I always tend to harp about that website, but it's an incredible tool to disseminate information, not just store it the way the old site used to do. Mm -hmm. It actually can push, push it out to different social media platforms and to people's emails directly. And so once people interact with the website, they're able to get information directly. Um, for folks who aren't necessarily comfortable with email or online, because I know um, certain parts of our population really want to be able to connect with people directly, how do you recommend people reach out to get information about what's happening in Pembroke? Well, what we're seeing is our folks who aren't comfortable with the website pick up that phone, and we're really glad to talk to them. I mean, that's very important. Nothing changed, you know, because we have a more robust electronic presence, um, which is so important in today's day and age. It didn't take away any of those people um, services, those direct face-to-face -face mm -hmm. one -on ones that we do, or it changed face-to-face -face in the sense that we do by appointment. You have to call to come into the building, but we're able to talk to people over and over. 
Okay, it looks like you're freezing a little bit, Sabrina, right now. So I'm going to turn over, and thank you so much. We'll, we'll get back to you um, in just a moment. But I'm going to turn it over to Lisa. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. You are such a wealth of information all of the time. Um, I'm going to ask you if you could just start by giving us an update on you know, what is the status right now um, and what is the case data that we're looking at in the town of Pembroke? Sure. Um, so right now our case data is trending down, which is great news. Um, we did see a surge as expected after the holidays. Um, unfortunately, people gathered and I understand why they do that. But um, we, we saw a case rise um, as a result of that. Um, now, what we're seeing is that that is plateauing off and even dropping in most instances, which is which is great news for us. Um, we're seeing that across the state. That's being indicated on Department of Public Health phone calls and other avenues. Um, so while we had a surge, it does seem to be ebbing off. I would advise people, and I know it's so easy to get COVID fatigue, um, avoid having those large gatherings, avoid unnecessary travel, avoid interacting with people outside your, your immediate family when you can do so. Wear your masks, keep cleaning your hands. Um, as, as we saw from this surge in cases due to the holidays, that, that this um, pandemic is not over. And while there are vaccines out there and we're starting to distribute them, I think most people will express their frustration is it's not as fast as they'd like and not as easily accessible as they'd like. Let me ask you, um, so while we're seeing things trend down and the governor has loosened up restrictions a little bit, we're also hearing messaging about variations um, and of the of the virus. And we're also hearing messages of should we be wearing one or two masks? Could you speak to those two issues for us a bit? Sure. So when it comes down to the variations, as far as we know right now, um, one of them seems to be a little bit more dangerous than the other two. Right now, the, the Health results of the other two um, seem to be the same as the original strain. They just seem to be more infectious, meaning they, they pass from person to person more easily. Um, but this is the nature of viruses. This virus is going to continue to mutate and, and result in other forms, just like we see out of influenza every year. While it's concerning, this is not a cause for panic. Um, what will be a concern is when we start seeing variants that are completely resistant to the vaccines that have already developed. As of right now, this is very early stages testing, but it seems like most of the vaccines out there at least minimize, if not fully inhibit, these variants as well. So that's good news. Um, but again, now it's not relax with your own personal care. And when it comes to uh, the question of should we be wearing one or two masks, what would your comments be um, regarding that topic? Really depends on the mask. Um, okay. If you're wearing a cotton mask with a nice layer in between there, you're probably just fine. If you're wearing an extraordinarily thin mask, um, or I, I know it's very popular as these gaiters with just one layer, you're not getting the same um, control for the droplets out of coming out of your mouth and you're not getting the same filtration going in. If we remember back to the beginning of the pandemic, there was much uh, talk about N95 masks, which are the, mm -hmm. the medical standard, the highest standard for, for filtration. and. Um, not getting in those particulates that could make you ill. Um, so really on your masks, it depends on how good your mask is. The thicker the mask, the better. Um, if you breathe far too easily in it, it's probably not doing that great a job. Um, simple bandanas over your mouth are, are not the best and most effective. You really want a tight fitting, which has always been the message, a tight fitting mask um, with multiple layers. Are there any other recommendations you would make for folks right now? Uh, there, because, there, again, there is so much information out there. Should we be having, um, if, if we are working, uh, should we be wearing gloves? Shouldn't we? Should be, we be having um, um, air filtration in our spaces? You know, o overall, for best practices, what would you recommend for residents who might be working uh, outside of their home? Sure. I mean, obviously, work from home is optimal. It minimizes your contact with other people, but for many industries, that's not possible. Um, gloves are not something that's really recommended unless you're in the medical field. Keeping your hands nice and clean is certainly important. Avoiding touching your eyes, nose, face, mouth, uh, really important. Um, if you're working outside the home, improving air filtration in any building is always going to help um, with airborne diseases and, and control. So that's always great when a, a company um, controls its infrastructure and can work on those kinds of things. I know tons of restaurants have done that work um, and they feel they've seen positive results from it. Um, but again, your personal 
hygiene, washing your hands, keeping your workspace clean, staying away from others. And it's so easy. It, it, it's so easy to fall in the habit of you see someone you haven't seen in a while or you're around a group of friends to let your guard down. I cannot tell you the number of you know, case studies and, and contact tracing that I've done that involves talking to someone, but I thought I was okay because I was just around my friend or I thought I was okay. I was just around my family. It's not like I was at a big party, um, but those small intimate gatherings are really where we're seeing the spread of the disease now. And and I think you're right. It, uh, we're hearing so much about fatigue and it's, it, it makes perfect sense. We are literally a year in and you, you can start to get used to whatever your situation is, right? So I think people at some level are getting comfortable. And from what I'm hearing from you, that's where we're running into trouble right now. The, the lion's share, it's not the only place. There are still you know, people in a professional that are at more mm -hmm. hazards due to their profession and things like that. But for the for the average case, um, I believe the state's the last chart that was updated on the state website was almost 45% of the cases um, that the likely infectious, you know, scenario was, you know, just close contact with friends and family rather than um, an, an exposure at random or an exposure at occupation. And, and what we're seeing on the state website too um, is showing us really clearly that it's, a couple of things from from what I've I've been viewing. Number one, um, the number of cases is really spreading out through age groups now, um, and has been trending that way for a couple of months. But hospitalizations are down than they than where they were in the spring. It doesn't necessarily mean that the virus has changed. It means that you know our medical professionals are getting better understanding of this virus and treatment. Um, would you agree with that? And what are you seeing in the town of Pembroke specifically? Um, absolutely. Certainly our medical professionals have made huge strides in therapy treatments that are available. We're seeing less people go on ventilators. That doesn't mean we're not seeing people go on ventilators. Um, and, and we are still losing residents, unfortunately. Um, I'm not at liberty to discuss exactly who or how many people, but we are still losing, um, unfortunately, residents due to COVID-19. Usually these people are still older and usually these people still have comorbidities, um, but there are still people without any of the, the mitigating factors that are getting quite sick. Um, but overall, it would seem that the, the lethality of the disease is dropping, which is great. And I, and I think it's both things. I think the virus is weakening a little bit, and I think our medical treatments are getting so much more effective and, and employed so much earlier that it is saving some people. Now, I know this isn't specific to, um, or it might not be specific to what you were doing on a regular basis, but is there anything you want to share regarding um, the school system in Pembroke and, and how things are going there and just speaking to parents in the town? Sure. So I'm on with the every week um, just to make sure that we're getting that message out there. Right now we have seen no evidence of spread within the school system. Certainly we've had individuals enter the school system that have been positive during their infectious period. Um, we quarantine them of course. We notify anyone that they were a close contact of to quarantine. But right now I think the single largest reason we're seeing so much success and that is non-transmission within the school systems is the spacing. Um, the, the insistence on social distancing, the enforcing of social distancing and on you know the nice thing about schools is the environment is a controlled environment meaning you must wear a mask. Um, being lax, being careless um, is, is not tolerated. Uh, you know, it's enforced that you wear your mask and do the right thing. And I think that's an example of when you are 100% compliant to the guidance out there. In other words, stay apart and wear your mask. It really does work. And, and every school system across America that's using that with that success, that would be an example of it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move on and ask uh, Wendy uh, questions specifically. So there's you know, there's so much information out there. The town website is amazing. Um, Mass.gov gives us so much information um, it, it, on a day-to-day -day basis as well with the governor's updates as well as being able to track data. Um, but, you know, for anybody who's online, there's so much out there and it can get really confusing. Can you speak a little bit to that? Because th unfortunately, there are also some scams floating out there and I I, especially around vaccines right now. So I wanted to ask just your feedback there. Sure, with just like um, residents to be mindful when opening text messages and emails from unknown senders promising a vaccine. Um, we've seen nationally that scammers are buying ads and offering to sell vaccines uh, directly to inter internet users. And we believe their goal is to obtain their credit card information 
Uh, we, we think that these people are preying on people that are anxious and vulnerable uh, during this time and they're anxious to get their vaccines. And I, and I think you make a really good point that, you know, um, we had talked a little bit about fatigue, but we're all, we're, we're all learning what our new normal is right now. So I think we're, we're getting into a routine and then to know that vaccines are now available, that creates the anxiety for everybody wanting a vaccine, right? And that's unfortunately where we're starting to see some of the some of these issues come up. Is that what you're hearing? Yes. Now, um, let me ask you also, with the, the calls that you're getting, um, what are what would you like to recommend to people? How should they be interacting uh, with the police department? Are they, are they not calling because they're fearful that there are too many calls coming in? Um, should they be calling you for information? Where would you point people to ask for accurate information? Sure. So we, we don't feel that uh, people aren't calling here. Uh, okay, people are still good. calling 911. Um, cool. And we are asking people um, if we are responding to the house, does anybody in the home have COVID-like symptoms, mm -hmm. fever, cough, tiredness, loss of smell, um, or taste? And we certainly will answer any questions or um, refer them to mass.gov or the Council on Aging if they could answer the questions more appropriately. Are you finding um, that mm -hmm. folks from different either age groups or different um, different areas of town have, what, what are the questions that you're getting right now from people? Uh, the biggest question is when is the vaccine going to be available to me? Okay. And that's, that's a tough one to answer because that's changing on a daily basis, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Let me let me open this uh -huh. up to, to the entire group um, in talking about vaccine, because clearly that's something that everybody is interested in right now. Uh, we know that the governor said that, you know, people age 75 and up are now eligible. We know that um, across the state, our first responders have been getting vaccinated. Would just this entire team, would you like to volunteer um, the information you have? Because, again, this is something changing on a daily basis. Sabrina, would you Lisa, like to Lisa, would you mind if I, I was just about to say, Lisa, do okay. you mind if I start and throw it over? Please. <laughs> Is that okay? Donna, one of the things that we saw, and the town manager was brilliant in responding to it right away. Um, he went and he gathered some of the data from the town clerk and from the Council on Aging Director, Gretchen Emmett, because we started to see an influx of seniors calling as soon as the governor got off his press conference, stating that he would change the order in which phase two was rolled out, putting... Um, individuals over the age of 65, right behind individuals over the age of 75 and people with comorbidities. So immediately we saw that ripple in the Pembroke population and the phones started ringing at town hall. And because again, some of this stuff is very fluid, it comes out very quickly. We're never really sure what he's gonna say. And we all stand paused and ready, like oh, we've got the catcher's mitt ready to go. Um, Bill reacted immediately with the Council and Aging Director, the Clerk, the Health Department, and came up with a strategy whereby the registered seniors in Pembroke, and according to the last survey of my senior center at the Council on Aging, that's approximately 1,678 individuals who are over the age of 75 in the town of Pembroke, um, they're able to get on the phone right now and call the Council on Aging at 781-294-8220 talk to someone about how to be first notified and registered as soon as a vaccination clinic for their age group comes available. And they're hoping to be able to start communicating with these people later in the week. Now, the secondary factor, the people coming along behind over 65, that's a larger segment of our, of our town. That's a lot of people. It's upwards of 3,705 people who are additionally going to be coming along behind the first 1,600. So these folks are more comfortable on a telephone, not on the system. We know that the shots, the vaccinations, have to be registered online. You have to log in, to, you know, create a username, put in your email address, put in your insurance information, and then sign up for a clinic. That's going to cause some struggle for some of our folks. And before Lisa takes over with all of the science and all of the logic from DPH, I just wanted to throw out there that Gretchen's doing a good job. Of all of our seniors right now who have questions about how that's going to work and who need assistance with getting some of that done. And we're going to create a little team of people in the background, admins, who are going to take the information that Gretchen can compile from her seniors and from all the folks who 
to contact her and get people registered in the background behind the scenes. Um, so that is at least something that as it developed, Bill was able to address with this team of people that you're talking to today. And Lisa, I apologize for jumping in like that. No, but this is, this is, and I appreciate all of you and all of your input because there's so much, again, it's changing daily and it can be confusing for residents and, and, and as well as administrators. So we really appreciate all of your input. So again, the number that you referenced was 781-294-8220. And that's the number that people should be yes. calling to register. Is that correct? Anyone over the age of 65. To okay. be fair, Gretchen is not going to be able to handle the volume mm -hmm. of every person who's interested in receiving that vaccination. Mm -hmm. She's going to be dealing with registered seniors in Pembroke. And um, a, a lot of uh, uh, great gratitude goes out to her. That's a lot of work. Now, on the back end, we're taking those calls here as well, but we're still doing the referrals for the data calling. She's going to mm -hmm. come up with all of the information that... Um, the Massachusetts inspectional login site is going to require okay. for someone to register for a vaccination. And if people go to mass.gov vaccines, they can register themselves that they're comfortable doing that. But given that it's the first day that people are able to do that over a certain age, it has been getting clogged. Um, people haven't been able yes. to go through. It's looking like some of the dates are already booked. So this is an ever changing right environment and people can check and, in and, daily. And, and Donna, to your point, uh, mm -hmm. they said on the news this morning that the governor is now meeting with people because they recognize now that there's going to be a need for people to be able to call seniors, to be able mm -hmm. to reach out to someone. So apparently the state is going to take a look at the feasibility of uh, helping local cities and towns um, assist all of the senior population mm -hmm. with getting registered. Excellent. Because the, this is, you know, it, it's always developing and patience is, is going to be our friend. Patience and safety is going to be our friend getting through this, but we're almost there, <laughs> I think is the best message. Is, would that be correct? Excellent. Thank you, Sabrina. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was just going to say, everybody you're about to talk to, and uh, I don't want to take anything away from them and give it back right now, but if you had all day, you could learn a lot from these people. <laughs> And I'm so thankful you're all here. And Ken, we haven't even gotten to you yet. We're almost there. Um, thank you so much for your for all of your patience. Lisa, um, is there anything you want to speak to specifically about vac vaccinations and people being able to register um, to be vaccinated? Certainly. I just want to remind people that being eligible is very different than meaning you can go today to get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, I want everyone about vaccination as the hottest concert ticket that ever came out. I want them to think about it like trying to get a Woodstock ticket or the, the last, you know, Aerosmith tour ticket or something like that. And unfortunately, the demand is enormous. And therefore, um, the getting through on the state website and getting a spot is going to be very challenging. And yes, they are going to sell out in minutes. And I do mean minutes. So those slots that are already gone, I'm not terribly surprised. I don't know when they opened it up this morning. I did know it opened up today. Could have opened up at midnight for, for all I know at this point. I don't know what the time frame on that was, but I've been informed by more than one individual that all those spots are gone. They're taken. Um, persistence is going to be rewarded here. Um, logging in on behalf of your, your senior friends or them logging in if they're capable of doing so um, as many times as possible to see when that might open up again for some more spots. Um, for those that are capable of getting to Gillette, um, keeping in mind that more vaccination centers and sites are coming online every day. Um, if you go to the state website, you're going to see a map of where some of those sites are. I do know that CVS has some sites online. You can go on to CVS's website and try to record um, a, a spot with them if that's possible. We are still working on a program here in town that we hope within the next week or two, if the state sends us vaccine, and I'll get to that in a minute, but if we get vaccine where we're going to try, we're working with uh, Duxbury and we're going to try to accommodate some of those seniors ourselves right here locally if we're able to. Um, and the site that Mr. Chilcott referred to is referred to as prep mod. Um, we would send out a link or make a link available. And that's, of course, going to be made available to the Council on Aging for those that the Council on Aging is assisting. And you would go onto that site. You would log in your personal information, log in your insurance information. And that's what would get you a site. But please work with a reputable agency 
if you are not working directly on the state website, if you're not working directly on CVS or Walgreens, if that happens to be close to you, their websites. Um, you know, the idea that uh, Lieutenant LaPierre mentioned about um, people scamming people, think of those as ticket scalpers. You do not want to deal with a ticket scalper. There is no ticket scalper out there that's got a real ticket. Um, so there's no third party vendors out there that have real access to real vaccine. Stick with your major known brands, stick with the sites and the, the vendors that are listed on the state website that will, you know, quote unquote, keep you out of trouble because you'll know it's a legitimate site with legitimate vaccine available to you. Um, do not under any circumstances give out any credit card information on any of these sites. Yes, some of these sites will bill insurance companies just for administration, just to recoup the cost. The vaccine itself is free. Um, these fees are under $40, but at no time should you be asked for a credit card by anyone. Um, so insurance information, yes, credit card, never. You should not be paying out of pocket for this. This is 100% covered. Um, so the best information I have right now is, again, refer to the state website, refer to your major vendors, known reputable vendors, and refer to your own local government. Thank you. And so starting mass.gov, um, also going to the Town of Pembroke website, uh, we know that CVS may be doing some of the uh, vaccinations moving forward, but when in doubt, always go back to the state and the town websites, correct? Okay. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so as as people, because we already have um, some of our seniors and, and our first responders um, have either gotten their first and in some cases second uh, vaccination. Uh, Ken, I'd like to turn to you and ask, you know, first, if you can give us an update on where things stand for first responders in the town and what your experience has been so far with vaccinations um, in, in order to start getting um, folks to that, that next point. Yeah, so we're um, currently, as Lisa was talking about, we're currently in uh, cooperation with our uh, partnering communities to get our first responders um, vaccinated, our police and fire. Um, we started that back January, the week of the 10th. Great. Um, police and fire went over and got their first, were able to get their first shot in, in Duxbury, and they'll be getting their second round sometime in the upcoming week, maybe the second week in February, um, to complete their, their round of vaccinations to hopefully protect them from it. Mm -hmm. um, it was a long time coming, um, a little bit different than the rest of our group. Uh, the governor, although he's doing a great job, likes to throw some surprises. I've probably got about 95 calls in the last day and a half um, when the vaccine, you know, they, they said they were going to change the date or the age or open up phase two. Um, at when I can get my shot, where am I going to get it? When are you going to give it? Um, so we are referring those, those individuals to um, the Council on Aging. I know Gretchen's probably pulling her hair out of her head. She's a busy um, woman right now. <laughs> and if we can help her in any way, yeah, if we can help her in any way, shape, or form, we'd be more than happy to do that. Um, it, it hasn't slowed us down. We have 200 runs, 27 days into the uh, month of January, uh, about seven runs a day. Um, and probably two or three of those are somewhat COVID related. Okay. Um, so, or have the potential to be COVID related. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're, we're still just, you know, protecting ourselves PPE wise. We're still, you know, carrying, uh, you know, one guy in, two guys into the building, not committing everybody in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've probably had about 25% of our staff has been affected in it, either by quarantining or had the actual uh, virus itself and had to take the, you know, 10 days to recover. Um, but, but we're, we're doing okay. We're, we're getting there and hopefully now that the vaccine's out, we're starting to get to our, our vulnerable uh, citizens and in, in, in 75 and 65 and hopefully be able to get to, um, you know, everybody else pretty soon. Uh, like Lisa said, we're, we're, we're more than willing to, to do it ourselves and try to get some vaccines and, and partner with Duxbury and Pembroke and Kingston. Um, the issue right now that I'm finding with myself and other chiefs is you can't get the vaccine. It's, okay. You call for it and it's very hard to get because they're delivering it to other sites. Um, so that's where we are currently with that. Uh, hopefully that changes uh, and they're able to produce a little bit more where Mandurta is within Massachusetts mm -hmm. um, and they can produce a little bit more. But that's where we are currently. We're doing well. Um, you know, and, and like Lisa said, in, in Sabrina, 
and Wendy, you just you just got to be vigilant. It's not over yet, so we do, we can't give up. We have to just keep doing what we've been doing: social distance, mask, wash your hands. You know, stay within your friend group. Don't throw large parties, and and we'll hopefully be able to get through this. You know, by September or something, we can we can see some change. Yeah, for the good. And you make a really good point. Um, we are literally at the beginning of a new stage, and um, and that's probably why uh, there's there's again some confusion and lots of questions and um, and it sounds like the town of Pembroke is you know right on it and moving everything forward as quickly as you can with all the information that you're getting on a daily basis as well as communicating to folks so let me ask you um, what does the next phase look like from your point of view you know because another place that I hear a lot of confusion I've got I've got my first vaccination and some folks just now are getting their second. And as you said, in your department in the next week are getting their second. Does that change anything with what people should be doing right now? What are gonna be best practices moving forward? Yeah, I mean, there's, you, you got it, whether you have the vaccine, you have one shot or two shots, you still have to, we still have to practice. We don't have anywhere near herd immunity yet. So we still have to practice the social distance, the masking, the washing the hands and staying out of large groups. Um, until you know we we can significantly understand that we have got a majority of the population done with it, which I don't see happening. And Lisa's probably better at this. I don't see this happening until the end of this year and beginning of the next year, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Um, I see you. Know, we have a substantial amount of people done. You know, maybe by November or December. I said, but um, you know, what happens if you get your first shot and that person doesn't show back up because they believe, oh, I'm protected. I got half a shot. I'm half protected. You could have your vaccine full shots and still be a carrier and spread. You know, you know, you may not get sick yourself, but you can still spread it if you went to a pie. So we, we have to be vigilant. Just because you got the shot doesn't mean that we're protected and it's all done. Um, and that's kind of where we are. So we're gonna continue as a town of Pembroke and this team to spread that message, to not screw it up. We still have to get to, you know, the end. We the end is the is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get to the very end of this so that you know we're comfortable. In, in, in the residents are comfortable that we have most of it behind us. And that's going to take a while. And, and again, just patience. We're, we, we can see the light, but patience. Now, let me ask you uh, one more question. Okay. Calling, right. calling 911. Um, what recommendations do you make to residents? Like when, because I hear lots of different things, and, and we all do, that some people aren't calling because they, they know there's so much stress. Um, some people aren't calling because they think they'll be fine at home. You know, when should people call if they're experiencing symptoms of either COVID or other health issues, and when shouldn't they? Is there anything you can offer from that point of view? Uh, so, yeah, so in the very beginning of this, people weren't calling because we were unsure of what the vaccine was. People didn't want to go to the hospital. They didn't want to be put on a vent. Okay. You know, people were afraid that they were going to die. That's all they were hearing. Um, it, it, we've gotten so much better over the last six or seven months uh, with that people if they're you know there's no reason to stay home if you're not feeling well and you need to go to the hospital just call us um i, I tell everybody just to call there is no stupid 911 call uh if you need to go get medical treatment um you know it it, it may not seem important to most but if, if you call 911 it's important to you so we're going to come we're going to take care of you so i just tell everybody just call just call we'll come we'll evaluate We'll take a look and see what's going on. If you need to go, you'll go. If you don't need to go, we'll, we'll find other options for you, whether it's going to a, um, you know, a Health Express or something to that effect, going to see your PPC, uh, PCP, uh, you know, on your own, um, or having someone take you. Do not hesitate to call 911 because of COVID. That COVID should have never changed people's reasons for calling 911. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So what I'd like to do now is, um, go back to our entire panel uh, one by one and just see if you have final comments that you would like to make, if there are topics we haven't touched on that you would like to address in this episode. So I'd like to start with Sabrina. Um, do you have any final comments or, or information that you would like to share with residents? Absolutely. Um, there is so much and has been since last March, to your point, almost a year, right? Mm -hmm. um, information comes out every day in some form or fashion, whether it's on your local news, national news, the governor's office, um, you're constantly onboarding new data, right? What does that mean? There's a clinic, it's down the street, it's full, it's empty, nobody's helping me. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual 
to feel as though you're running to catch up with the information. That is absolutely what's been happening and it's normal and it's okay. And if you have questions to Lisa's point and to Wendy's point and to the chief's point, please look at a reputable source. If you're not savvy and don't go to mass.gov or pembroke-ma.gov, pick up that phone and call someone in your local government. Get referred to somebody you can trust. There's a lot of information and Lisa with DPH is tasked with making sure everybody from the town manager right on down to every single one of us here has as much current data as she can get from the state as it's happening or maybe just shortly before it happens so that we can have the best information to share. Um, so as the chief pointed out, don't hesitate to call, pick up the phone, we're here. We wanna help, we wanna share the information. Just because we don't stand up a clinic today in the town hall doesn't mean that we aren't going to be responsible enough to see this through for the next six, eight months, however long it takes to get every single Pembrokean where they need to be and, uh, and safe. Thank you, Sabrina. Appreciate that. Uh, Lisa, I'd like to come to you next. Um, do you have any final comments? Is there anything, we, we didn't really touch on testing so much today. Is there anything you would like to offer residents um, or additional information? Um, patience is gonna be the name of the game. Um, it's very easy to watch the national news and see this is going on in every other state as well. Um, people that are calling and very challenged to get through and get those very few spots um, that are available because that's all the vaccine that's available. The vaccine is being produced faster and faster. The Johnson and jo Johnson vaccine is said to come online now. They, they they were back in June and now they've moved it up to the beginning of April. That will be a game changer. And I know Pfizer and Moderna are ramping up production. Remember, this is just not a USA or or a Massachusetts problem. This is a worldwide pandemic. We're not the only people seeking these vaccines. On the state calls, the state is indicating. All the vaccine they get every week is distributed that week. I know some towns that have um, put in allocations for vaccine for thousands and got a few hundred. I know people that put in for several hundred and got 100. That's literally 100 doses. That means that's all the spots that are available. And if that's what hap is happening on the municipal side, I know that's what's happening um, on the pharmaceutical side as well. Understand no one's holding back. No one's hiding it from anyone. Um, there is no way to buy your way to the top of the list. Um, calling myself, calling the police department, calling the fire department is not going to move you to the top of the list. You just have to be patient. Um, you have to be persistent with trying to sign up. Remember, you are trying to get that very special concert ticket and there's no scalpers. There's no scalpers for the vaccine. There's no way around the system. If you are not working on a reputable site, Walgreens, CVS, the state website or the town's website, um, you're not working with a reputable vendor that's going to get you this vaccine. I do know that more and more distribution points will come online as more vaccine becomes available. Again, they will be linked on the town site because we are only gonna link you to reputable sites. And if you are someone that is not internet savvy, perhaps you're more advanced in years, the folks at Council on Aging are ready to help you. Again, please be patient with them. This is a tremendous lift and a tremendous workload that they're doing, but they will help you through it. Again, their number is 781-294-8220. Um, and they'll help you walk through the system as well. Um, so again, remember, that, that there's only so much vaccine, it's being distributed as rapidly as it can, and to try to be patient and just be persistent with being on those sites to try to sign up for the doses that are available. That is wonderful advice, thank you. So be patient, be persistent, and be a smart consumer each and every step of the way. You are your own best advocate and ensure that you are always on a safe website. So thank you so much, Lisa. Um, Wendy, is there anything additional you would like to offer to uh, the residents and viewers about what you've been hearing through the police department and how, you want, how you're working to keep everybody safe. I don't really have anything else to speak except for um, personal experience with the vaccine. Um, the process went very well for us at the police department. We're very thankful that we were afforded the opportunity to get the first vaccination. Um, I had very slight side effect, just a um, mild pain to my right arm, and that was it. And I've heard that other people have had swelling and maybe some headaches, but very minor side effects. And, and that's really a good point because people have been questioning that as well. Uh, but what we're hearing is, for the most part, it's typical to what the side effects would be for a flu shot or a pneumonia shot. Is that what you're hearing in your experiences as well? 
Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. So again, going back to your earlier point and, and to Lisa's point as well, always be a smart consumer. If there is something that seems too good to be true, it probably is. You're not going to be able to get, um, you shouldn't be giving out your credit card information for any reason. And if there's a question, they should call and, and ask for support. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. We really appreciate uh, your time today. And, and Ken, I would like to come to you now. Are there any final thoughts that you would like to offer to residents uh, regarding an update for COVID for the town? Sure, I'm kind of going to go with Sabrina a little bit. We're not giving up on the, the townsfolk. Um, we've taken them through it for almost a year. Um, and, and the vaccine is here. So we're going to follow through with that in any way, shape that we can, whether it's like Lisa said, giving it out to some of our uh, most vulnerable and elderly uh, or guiding them in the right direction. But we're, we're not going to just stop. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to take it and follow it all the way through. Um, there have been some, you know, chatter on Facebook and, and things like that, that, oh, what are we doing? Every other town around us is doing something. We're not doing anything. We're working every day. Uh, this team from the town manager all the way down speaks almost every single day on this topic. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get the information out to you, whether it's either here in town or it's in another community or through CBS, like Lisa said, uh, to, to find out where you can get the shot. And if you can get the shot, please get the shot. Wonderful. Thank um, you. The side effects are what they are. Some people have them, some people don't, but don't let that determine whether you get the shot or not. Just get the shot. Thank you. Um, and, and thank all four of you for being a part of this update today. Um, for all of you at home who are watching this, whether live or in replay, uh, some of your key points, if you are looking for general information from the state and from the governor, please visit mass.gov. Uh, you can click right on the top of the website. When you go to the homepage, there's all of the updates and information for COVID-19. If you want to get information specifically from the town of Plymouth, please visit Pembroke slash ma.gov. And if you uh, need to, if you are a senior and you need support from the uh, Council on Aging in order to be able to sign up, or if you have any questions, please call 781-294-8220. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of the COVID-19 update for the town of Pembroke. Please be safe.